Guys, this is awesome. I've been waiting for this for the past one month now. <laughs> so um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we are going to talk about um, how we brought in-app reviews to Android for Xamarin. So um, it wasn't there before. It just recently uh, got introduced. And a lot of this stuff is brand new. It, um, people have been wanting this for years now, and we finally got it. So a little bit about myself. Why am I speaking in front of you? Who am I? Uh, that's me in high school, a little stick figure there. And I graduated from the University of Texas at Dallas. I studied engineering. Um, <clears throat> after graduating, I uh, did this boot camp called Epic U, where we studied a bunch of stuff, including C-sharp. And uh, the, one of the projects that I did there was really cool. And so one of the companies called Exigo uh, decided to hire me into their mobile team, which I was really excited for. And that's what I was uh, doing on the side. So I was like, hey, I want to get into mobile. And they're like, yes, we do Xamarin, which is cross-platform mobile. So I was like, let's do this. And I worked there for a while. And then I worked in you know other places too. Finally, I got picked up by a consulting company called Slalom, and uh, they're popular in North America. Um, and uh, through them, I worked on the My Spectrum app that we were just talking about with Heffling. It um, it's they basically provide internet and TV and uh, telephone services to. Um, like, I don't know, millions of people in the United States. I think it's like 50 million or something like that. Pretty pretty sizable. And they're number two. Comcast is number one. And um, I was one of, initially, one of eight developers on that team. And then the team grew to like 30 or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and I got to work on all kinds of really cool stuff there. Um, and then we, we had, there were over like 2 million downloads at one point. And, uh, you know, we worked on accessibility, we worked on automated UI testing, unit testing, security, all this really, really cool stuff. And uh, I, I got to grow myself quite a bit over there. Um, and then I moved to Toronto in 2018 in June, and I continued working on that project uh, while I was here. And, uh, you know, I also volunteer a little bit. I, um, uh, as Andrew said, that app actually, before I left, it hit number five on the top iOS apps. So it was, even though it was Xamarin, you know, so you can build really high quality stuff using Xamarin. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's motivation for you to, um, to build apps with Xamarin. Yep. Um, apart from that, I also have, um, you know, done a bunch of uh, talks and um, a bunch of articles about using GitHub Actions with Xamarin, uh, controlling Raspberry Pis using Xamarin, <laughs> like, you know, do doing some really cool stuff. And yeah. Um, so a little further on what is, hey, why is this frozen? One more. Okay, perfect. So, in oh, what are in app reviews? Um, oh, wait, actually, yeah, there we go. So, what are we going to talk about? We're, you know, I introduced myself, then we're going to, you know, I'm just going to show you guys uh, what in app reviews are. And then we, the demo is going to be the majority of uh, the talk. So, um, essentially, what you're going to learn is you know, if you actually want to do something, you can do it no matter if you've done it before or not. Like, it doesn't matter how many years you've been a developer, how many years you've been doing Xamarin development for, you know, if, if you think that you can do it, you'll be able to do it. So never doubt yourself. Okay. And uh, 
yeah, so I'm going to go over how to implement it in a blank app. So it's, you know, directly from blank. Show you guys how it takes less than a minute to implement this. And then how we can actually test these in-app reviews. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, how we created this bindings library and the whole process and how, you know, this bringing this actually ha required someone to contribute to open source. You know, so behind all these cool features that you see is some guy or girl deciding to help out other people, essentially. Uh, so what are these in-app reviews? What do they look like? Essentially, uh, before August on Android, if you wanted someone to rate your app, the only thing that you could do was send them to the app store, the Play Store. There was no way to have them stay within the app and actually rate the app. So what what happened because of that is um, if you take someone to the Play Store and they rate the app, it does not bring them directly back to the app. So, you know, you lose retention rate. It's not a good user experience to take people out of the app. Uh, you know, you're trying to get them to do some work to continue using your app. And so uh, these in-app reviews are really valuable. So essentially now what you can do is just say, hey, request a review from the user. It pops up this little box at the bottom of your screen and you, you, know, you put the stars, you say it's a four-star app. You, uh, you know, put in the review if you want to and then you just hit submit. That's it, as simple as that. And uh, you, know, you have the in-app review. So, what changed in August? Why weren't you able to do this before? So Android, in August 2020, which is about two months ago now, they decided to release version 1.8 of this library called PlayCore. And they decided, hey, you know, there's this random library that not many people use. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and add this in-app review feature in uh, the PlayCore library. And so um, people are like confused. They're like, why are you adding it into that library? Like, that's the most random thing you guys can do. It's not even related. And I mean, it kind of is related. The PlayCore um, has to do with, you know, uh, updating the app. Um, it has to do with like installing a part of the app and, you know, not another. Some features are not really supported uh, by Xamarin. And so because of that, there was no support library that Xamarin made. So the Xamarin team did not create a support library for PlayCore because, you know, they said, oh, you know, we can't support all the features in it. And so we can't officially create a support library for PlayCore. And so developers were not really able to implement it because of that. Like, Usually we are spoiled because Xamarin creates all these support libraries and we use them. And then they were just like, no, we can't do it this time. And so, but we all know that in-app reviews like greatly improve the user experience, you know? And iOS has been having this feature since OS 10.3, which was March, 2017. So developers are like, what's going on? Three and a half years, like why is it so late? So, um, you know, like I basically, hmm, let's see, why isn't this moving? Move. Okay, so um, one more. Okay, yeah. So uh, this uh, this gentleman in Germany, his name is Patrick Getzman or Pat Get. That's how he goes. He had a PlayCore binding that he created. Um, but it was only uh, it, it was only for the version 1.7.2 of the um, PlayCore library. So it did not have 1.8, which is the one that was needed by um, uh, you know that supported this in-app reviews. And so um, uh, this is like the most recent one. This is what I helped him um, update, basically, and. Even if we had a 1.8 version, like no one had actually implemented the in-app review feature. 
you know, you can have the library, but if you don't really know how exactly to use that library, it doesn't really help that much. And then that along with, um, we know that the plugin store view by James Montemagno is one of the most popular um, NuGet packages that you can use in Xamarin. And it really simplifies um, submitting or you know requesting a review from a user and <clears throat> so i was like okay you know uh patrick getsman he already created that 1.7.2 version let me just um create this and then when i compared my uh library my bindings library to his it was almost exactly the same so i was like okay you know what like instead of creating my own thing uh let me just go ahead and submit a pull request to his um to his NuGet package, basically to his Binance library, and you know, uh, he liked it. We, you know, um, actually before that, I had actually created an issue on his um, on his Binance library, saying, "Hey, you know, we need this in-app review feature." And so, uh, you know, twenty days had passed, and um, you know, there was like he said, "Yeah, you know, we we do like no one." It, it didn't really get much traction, and no one seemed interested. So I was like, "Okay." You know what? Like, I had a uh, a deadline coming up, and I was looking for stuff to procrastinate with. You know, usually people like clean up their room. I was like, hmm, what issues did I submit? <laughs> and so this uh, PlayCore issue uh, came up, and I was like, oh, that would be neat to procrastinate with. It would be worth my procrastination time. So <laughs> I decided, hey, uh, let me follow um, this video that I watched, uh, that I attended in person. So uh, John Dick, um, he presented at the Toronto .NET Developers Meetup. And so I had always wanted to actually, you know, implement this stuff, like follow the steps and implement it. Like I tried it before, but it didn't really work with uh, one of the packages. Uh, it was a Zendesk package. So I was like, okay, you know, maybe it'll work with this one. So I tried it and it worked. and after it worked, I spoke with James Bond Magna. I was like, hey, by the way, I know you have this awesome package. Would you be interested in you know, using our NuGet package to um, implement this? And he was like, yeah, it sounds awesome. And then he uh, basically took um, that play chord, the newer play chord version that, uh, that we updated, and uh, he has a beta version. And so in our demo, we're going to first uh, just implement the happy path with his beta version and see how easy it is to request a review. And then we're going to go into, you know, how we actually implemented it and uh, created the Binance library. It's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, come on. This is never... Oh, here. So, um, one thing that that John Dick mentioned is in order to get these uh, to implement this, you get an AAR file from this website called searchmaven.org, which basically it's like the NuGet package manager for uh, for Java. It's just, you know you search for your NuGet packages there, so it's your Maven packages. And I couldn't find any Maven packages for. Um, for PlayCore. And I was like, hmm, you know, I was like searching really hard. And then I found that it was on the official Android website itself. So I was like, okay, you know, I was just able to implement that. Um, and then the native implementation, as we'll go over, is a lot more complicated. And, you know, that's why, and you'll notice, like, that's why we, I recommend using the, um, the NuGet package by James Montemagno, because you have to, you don't have to worry about all this stuff over here. So, if you want to implement it from bare bones and not use the NuGet package, you basically have to create the review manager, as you can see over here. Then you request um, a review info object, so you have this object, and then you use that review info object and you um, launch the in-app review flow. I think one of these is just na not named correctly but uh and and so this was uh basically this is the java code and you can't really implement this by itself um because of various reasons and we'll go over this when we're you know implementing and so you have to essentially convert it into c sharp 
and implement it you know using the c-sharp language so here let's go over as i mentioned the first step which is um, creating a blank app so um i you know i just went to file new solution and um you know just go to blank forms app you know and just say next uh put in an app name you know and then say next and then just place it in my app okay so this is completely blank it has no code whatsoever um i usually don't do this um but i decided to do it today so <laughs> usually i always have like the code there but i was feeling brave anyway <laughs> so um we will test it out on in a uh, debug mode on the app so i have uh, a device in my hand and i'm going to um start a visor and i'm just going to show you what a blank app looks like okay so it's a blank app i say view var oh no sorry a later view Yeah, so this is what the app, the device looks like. It's building. I'm going to make sure that it builds fast. So don't link. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Uh, we can make it faster, but that's okay. Uh, the first build obviously takes some time. And so while it's building, we're just gonna add some stuff over here. So what do we have here? This is a blank app. You don't need to know any uh, Xamarin before in order to you know, figure this out. But uh, we have a main page, and that's it. There's no other pages. Uh, we have the XAML, and we have the C-sharp code behind. You know, there's, there's nothing in the C-sharp code behind except for the initialization of the XAML. Over here, we, you know, we have like a bunch of labels. There's no buttons whatsoever. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a button that um, we're going to say will request a review, essentially. You know, because the uh, buttons, so the review uh, action is basically like an event. So using a button, you can you know call that event. You can say, okay, as soon as you tap this button, let's request a review. <clears throat> So um, over here, we're going to add a button and say text of the button is going to say request review. And then uh, the clicked functionality is just, you know, button clicked for now. And then we'll just go this twice. We'll have two buttons. Okay, it's all in a stack view. I've made no change whatsoever except for adding these two buttons. And we're gonna have two button handlers. It's still installing the app on my device. Oh, actually, I said no by mistake when it said uh, when it asked for permission to <laughs> install it, but that's fine. So in the meantime, uh, you know, I created these two buttons, and I'm also going to add. Uh, Montemagno's NuGet package. So it's just called the store view. And as I mentioned, um, it's still in beta for, um, and it may not be in beta for long. You know, we were just testing some stuff out and, you know, we, stuff, uh, we tested the stuff um, successfully. So uh, you know, the app loaded, it had everything that it was there before, and we just added these two uh, buttons over here, you know, that's signified by button clicked and the button underscore click too. Now I'm going to add his um, his NuGet package, as I mentioned, his plugin store review. It's the version three. So if, you know, by the time you watch it, a newer version comes out that's not pre-release, um, you can just use that. But for now, it's uh, still a pre-release package. So go ahead and add that. And I'm going to add it for, you know, Android, iOS, and the, the core project. And I'm going to go using plugin.storeview. Okay. 
And then over here, I'm just going to say um, request review. Review. The current dot request review. That's it. It's um, that simple. Oh, OK. So um, it's awaitable. So we can, you know, just add async over here. So wait this over here, and then async over here, and await this over here. Now uh, there is something called a test mode. Um, essentially, and so you'll be able to see it over here. So uh, you see how it's it requires you to add test mode, whether it's true or false, um, and for this, essentially, if you want uh, like a UI test to reveal that it was um, that the button was clicked, you'll be able to see in uh, in the logs. And and you know we're we're going to do it right now. You'll be able to see that it says that the review is requested. And um, so we're going to have a true over here. So. This is going to be test mode button. And then over here, we'll have a false, which is a production button, like for production. And we're going to go over here, and it'll say test. Over here, we'll say prod. OK, and we're going to stop it since we made changes in the C sharp. We're going to restart the app. And wait for it to load. Yeah, but it's as simple as that. All we had to do was add the, um, you know, add the plugin, and then we just call this line. That simple, you know, simplify it like so much for you, for all the developers out there. Um, and now, as you can see over here, we have two buttons: request review test and request review prod. So I'm just going to wait for it to finish up over here. And now I'm going to say request review test. So as you see, it, you know, pulls up over here and it says, you know, it does all its thing. But if you request, yeah, well, uh, over here, it's, you know, it just doesn't call it. So um, there has been some work done in the library that essentially manages some of the stuff. So yeah, anyway, now what we're going to do is as you noticed, you weren't able to see the in-app review. That's because you can't see in-app reviews. Otherwise, everyone would, you know, review their apps here um, in debug mode. You know, they just give themselves five stars every single time. You know, however, you know, um, it, if you build it locally, you can't. But if you publish the app onto the Play Store that's when you can actually see the review. Well, that's a bummer. Not everyone can actually publish their app and just to test out stuff, isn't it? So the good thing is that there is a feature and you know we're gonna take a look at that. Um, so if you have an app in the App Store, let me create an archive. So uh, let's see, resources, properties. So I'm going to create an archive with an app that I already have in the Play Store. And save this. And then, oh, and one more step. So and this is something that I had missed personally when I was uh, testing this, is that if you set your linker and shrinker settings to you know D8 and then co-shrinker to R8, um, and you know you set it to link all, then what happens is that it deletes those classes from the Play Core library. And so what you need is you need a um, a ProGuard file. So it's just like ProGuard.txt. And like I said, this is only if you um, actually set your settings as you know as that. And so you just create this ProGuard file. You uh, set build action to ProGuard configuration, and then you paste in the code. Actually, let me show you guys um, his the instructions too. So if you just search James Montemagno, yeah, 
here. So if you just go to his uh, GitHub page uh, for this plugin, you'll see the instructions over here say, oh yeah, just request review, it's that simple. And now if you want, if you care about, you know, having your shrinker and linker settings, then just put this into your ProGuard file. This is something I added last night. <laughs> so anyway, you just, you know, that's it. It's that simple. And now uh, all you do is change this to release and archive for publishing. So the neat thing with Android is that they have something called internal testing or internal app sharing where you can upload your, your archive and the Play Store is the one that distributes it. So that's what we're going to take use of in order to test others. There's no possible way to test this. So that's pretty neat uh, that, you know, that they are securing it that way so people don't fake reviews. So while it archives, I'm going to go to the Android developer console. Let me see if I'm logged in over here. Let's see. Hopefully. Sign in. Oh, sign in with a different account. Mm -hmm. No, let's use a different browser. Okay, still archiving. Okay. Um, and now I go in to, so I look for my app that I want to install it in. So the BJR's guide is one of the apps that I'm working on. And if you scroll down, are you able to see uh, my screen without lag? Yeah, we, we, we see it okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, as you guys know, the Google Play Console, they changed their UI. So um, this is basically what their new UI looks like. You just select your app, and then you go to internal app test sharing, and you upload your APK over here. So. Um, just go here, click on that. And uh, we're going to wait until this archive finishes. The life of so, the developer is just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I mean, in the meantime, what we can do is so what we we're going to show is we're just basically going to upload it and then test it and sh you guys can see the um the in-app review oh there we go sign and distribute so next man it was hard to like figure this stuff out because you can't test it you know in qa you have to only you can only test it in production and so um Wait, let's see. Is this, did I do this right? Let me check. Let's upload it. Hope that it allows us to upload. Yeah, but if you can't test any, uh, test a bug in QA, <laughs> like that is hard. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think it allowed us to put it. Um, wait, was this the right one? Let's wait for it. So, downloads. Yeah, 714. But yeah, if you if you can't test something in QA and you, you have to wait until it goes to prod, like that's a, first it's like stressful and second it takes a lot of time to figure that stuff out. So, oh yeah, yeah, don't have permissions. So, for some reason, it did not change my package name. 
That is strange. Why is it publishing it as something else? It should be publishing it as kind of BJR Stuff Freedom 7. Hmm. Something is shady. Something is not right. Let's clean all and Okay, now let's archive for publishing. When it's archiving, let's see. What is it archiving it as? Com dot. Okay, hasn't come to that stage yet. But yeah, this, I mean, it should be this. I don't see any other reason why it would be storing it as a different bundle ID, isn't it? Something might have been cached in your IDE from earlier in the day. Probably. That'd be my guess. I have no idea. That's archiving is always a pain. I'll let the build server do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. While it's archiving, what we can do is I can show you guys how we got started on this. So uh, based on that video from John Dick, I just followed it, you know, and <clears throat> earlier they did not have the ability to add bindings libraries to Mac uh, VS for Mac, but then they introduced it. And so it's a huge um, plus for Mac developers. Um, so you just add a new project and then you look for, let's see, where is it? It's been a while now. You get package, let's see, multi platform library, portable library, multi platform library, .NET, class library. What? Okay, where did that go? Ah, there we go. Yeah, so an Android bindings library. Obviously, it's separate from an iOS bind bindings library. So just add that bindings library. Call it, you know, let's go, let's call it review or play core. Uh, play core two, just so it doesn't cause issues. And uh, let's see, what is? Oh, with debugging enabled. Why would it do that? And why is it saying identifier com.tsp.test again? Hmm, let's see. Let's go back to this. Why are you archiving with debugging enabled? Compiler? None. And linker, let's say link all, or link none. So it's easy. Uh, general, use this, use that. Just put DX for now. Um, clean. Let's unload this because we don't need it right now. And, oh Lord, I swear I did this a million times. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. Okay, let's at least uh, change the version number. So oh, hopefully we can at least see that change. Um, five, let's see, 5.0. And also let me open this in, um, in VS Code. Make sure the change is actually seen. Ah, yeah, it's not making the change for whatever reason. Oh, no, it actually did. The package name's right there. Hmm. Okay, hopefully third time's the charm. Well, before you do that, I'm going to give you yeah. my unsolicited advice. Shut down Visual Studio for Mac and reopen it. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. I, that's I, exactly what I'll do the third time <laughs> if it doesn't work again and shows me that identifier. So... I, this has got to be painful, but I actually think this is really good to show people the stuff doing the archiving is not easy. There's always yeah. these weird problems you run into. Certainly. 
Oh, sorry. Give me one second. Okay, archiving. Uh, let's see. So, um, also, um, most likely, and here, let me show you guys some stuff over here. So, this is uh, Patrick Getzman's um, play core. So, oh, oh, pad get play core, GitHub. Yes, so this is his play core library and like some of the stuff that I helped him out with. Um, it looks a lot better. So I go over here, it's still archiving. So go over here, you'll see under issues, uh, closed issues. Uh, here, this is like, that was the second issue opened in this library, in this GitHub repository. And so it basically says, hey, in-app reviews. Hi, does this support this feature <laughs> on August 25th? And then, you know, uh, 27 days ago, which is about 20 days later, I was like, hey, I created a PR, <laughs> you know. And um, it basically actually just implemented uh, the stuff. So it was just, hey, I did this, I followed this, and I did internal app testing, and this is what it looked like. And uh, and it got merged. So all you had to do is, you know, inside the jars library, you just add that AAR file and make that change. I mean, that's the only change that needed to be made. So let's see, did it? Wait. Wasn't it creating an archive? Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me quit Visual Studio here. It definitely was creating an archive. <laughs> yeah, it was like, okay, he's not watching. Let me, <laughs> let me just yeah. do my own thing here. Okay. Let's see, what is that? I've had that happen to me when I'm in archiving projects where I went to go into chat somewhere on Teams or Slack and I came back and it just stopped doing stuff. <laughs> it's like, mm, you can't step away. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, let's set it to archive in the meantime again and then I'll uh, show you the rest of the stuff. So let's see. Come on, come on. Okay, so again, let's say archive for publishing. Okay, hopefully it's going to continue archiving in the meantime. Um, so, as I mentioned, you know, I had to look for the um, this AAR file. So you just look for Android in app reviews, and then it pops up. Uh, you know, the developer, Android official developer guide. And then, uh, you know, it, it basically says all the stuff. And then it says, hey, here's your play, play core library. And so I just go ahead and scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. And then it says, um, here's the zip. I click on that. I say download. And uh, essentially, over here, what you get is... Um, an AAR file, which is just a, a version of oh, like one of tens of ways that Android can use packages. So earlier people created libraries and then there were different ways that you know you could have a jar library in in your android project you could have an aar library c++ library so <laughs> this is like one of the more modern ways of uh, them you know creating the stuff so um if you just bring this over here into your project so it's still archiving so i just right click oh hey look at that conda bjr stuff freedom 7 perfect okay so quitting Visual Studio actually did the trick. And save to downloads. Put the password for the certificate. 
and that's it. Done. Now I go here, uh, here, upload the app. And I'm just going to shorten the link so I can put it into my computer. I mean, into my phone. So once it gives me the link from here, all I do is I go into the browser. I think it might take some time though. Um, okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, hey, look at that. Heffling. <laughs> right there. Okay. Um, so, uh, one of the cool things that I learned also from John Dick is uh, you select display options and say show all files and it'll show you even the bin and object folders. And so this was really useful in um, while I was debugging to understand exactly what's going on and why something is not uh, accessible. So once I uh, basically added a blank bindings library, I just right click on the jar files. I say find existing files and uh, go to downloads, look for this AAR file and just say copy. And then I just check the build action. So um, I think it's library project zip. Let's see. OK, so once I add it in over there, I just right click over here and I say build play core. And once it's built, you can look at the bin and obj folders and you can see you know, what's generated essentially, whether or not it actually populates the stuff. So you, as you can see, it's like building all of this uh, stuff over here and uh, gives you an error. It says, hey, does not implement the interface member. Oh yeah, and so um, this was, okay, wait, let's go back over here. Let's see, did it, oh yeah, there we go, upload. Okay, so it's done uploading. Um, here's the version. Go over here. Yeah, as you can see, like testing it was such a pain. <laughs> it's like, okay, did I get this right? I don't know. I can't actually test it. So I'm just getting my phone. I say bit.ly slash 3dws uh, mnd. Oh, Lord. I think I'll have to switch. Yeah, I think I'll have to switch to this device, my pad. Just because I'm logged into a different account on uh, here, on that test device. So, okay. Okay, what's up with this? I don't have Wiser on this. How is that possible? Ah, there we go. Yeah. So this is my Pixel device. Uh, Bit.ly slash 3DS DWS MND. Okay, open in Play Store. So it's basically taking me, I'm going to inst uninstall the older version. And I'm going to install this new version of the app. No, I don't want to see ads. <laughs> OK. So uh, basically, it's a big app because we didn't shrink it down just so it could have archived faster. <laughs> All right, come on. Moment of truth. Stuck at 
just like my productivity. <laughs> Come on. Do this for me. Don't be stuck at 88%. Please. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. Let's hit open. Here we go. So it opened the app. As you remember, you know, we set one to false and we set the other one to true. So if we tap on the test one, which is set to true, basically test mode, it doesn't really do anything. But if we if we tap on the prod one, ta-da, it shows you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it shows you, uh, you know, the app and it says, hey, review the app. And then you give it a five stars. You say blah, 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 blah. And then um, I can't submit because of the fact that it is a um, like it's an in-app or internal app sharing thing. But once you actually submit it from the app store, you can actually you know submit the app uh, review. But yeah, that is uh, that is what it looks like. Okay, I so I sh now. yes. Okay, when you pull up that uh, prod button there, um, and I know it doesn't really matter from the developer perspective, but w what's happening there from the, the native perspective? I assume that's just an activity that they're putting on the screen? Um, that's a good question. So they don't really share uh, what exactly they are doing, uh, but I would assume that it is um, just like a dialogue that's being displayed, you know? So possibly like a, a little fragment while um, graying out everything else. But mm -hmm. it could be an activity, you know, on uh, from the Java code front, when you look at it, uh, as I showed, you know, it's just basically calling a review manager, you know, it, it doesn't say anything uh, about... Yeah, uh, it I know what's it. doing. That's that's displaying a dialogue, like a native Android dialogue on screen. Yeah. that's uh, centered on the bottom. That's what it's doing. Because yep. because yeah. I saw in the native code, it's requesting an activity, and to display the dialogue, you need the activity for uh, its parent container. Uh, uh, sorry, I digress. Oh, I was, I where, where did you see that? Um, in one of your slides, it was asking for the activity and the code, uh, the the native Kotlin code you're sharing. Oh, uh, let me let me look at it. So let's look at it um, here. So exit here. Yeah, that that, that slide right there. And um, I thought it was that. Yeah, the uh, the launch review flow there was asking for the uh, the current activity. Oh yes. So yes. so that, to me, I've, I've done a lot of work with the Android native dialogues, which is why, which is part of the reason <laughs> I was asking that question. Uh, so yeah. because they're pass because you're passing that activity, it's probably displaying a native dialogue, and then they're just rendering, like you said, a fragment inside of that. Oh, I see. I see. What you're so that, yeah. That'd be my yeah. guess, just from what I've probably. seen so far. Probably, probably. Okay, so uh, you know, once we come over here. Um, and you know you try to add this, and you see that error, that build error. It's not allowing you to build. And so I was like, hmm, why is it not allowing me to build? And you know I Google this error, and it says you know it does not implement this interface. I was like, okay, hmm. Uh, so I, I you know I try to look around, and when I, um, so there's many ways of going around that problem. One of them is uh, essentially, if you go in to Pat Get, like Patrick Getzman's library, you'll see that he adds, uh, he basically selects what he wants um, to build. So he says in his metadata, like in the transforms metadata file, he adds these, uh, you know, these um, attributes basically to rename the stuff. But this one over here is what he uses to get rid of that error. So it says, hey, uh, you know, you don't implement this native on complete listener. And I mean, there are people who have implemented it. So there is a way of, you know, getting about it with the actual implementation. But for now, you know, we don't really need it. So we'll just, you know, go into the met metadata file and you know just add that remove node yeah and, and it kind of gives you over here it says hey you know 
in order to get rid of that, uh, like in order to remove certain classes, you can just call this remove node class. Okay, and so I just, you know, build this again. Oh, um, and so you see, it gives you, wait, what does it say? I state updated listener, native asset package. Um, let's see. Okay, let's bring all of this stuff in. And let's say clean this time and build. And let's also look at uh, the build, uh, the CS proj for this library. So it goes over here and I say, um, so it is set to, you know, a library project zip. So, you know, we were right over there. So when we right clicked over here, it said build action. Oh, oh, no, 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 here. It, it is a library project zip, so that's fine. Okay, now we're not getting any errors. And so now what you can see is in your obj and your bin folders, you know, you'll be able to see there's that DLL over there. And over here, deeper in, you'll see that, uh, you know, it has all these uh, classes implemented. So you can, um, here you can see under, you know, generated source, you can see all these classes you know, are generated over there, including this review manager, review info, all this review manager factory, all the stuff that's actually needed for us to implement this uh, logic in our app. Now, all you got to do now that, and that's it, you know, that's your bindings library. All you had to do is put in some stuff, you know, create that new bindings library, put in some stuff in your metadata, add um, the you know, the play core, the, whatever the AAR library is that you're trying to implement, and then just hit build. If it builds successfully, you're done. And then um, you just add a reference to that from your Android project to test it, you know? So this by itself can be shipped. You can create a new package and there's, you know, there's a documentation on create new get package. Um, from bindings library. You know, there's a lot of documentation on out there and you can essentially, you know, publish your own get package like this. Like there's so many people doing this. And so I highly recommend doing it as well. Um, so in order to test it, test that it works, all you have to do is go into your Android because it's an Android bindings library. So go into your Android, add a reference to that library. So add a reference, say, okay. And now, you know, you have it over there. Um, over here, um, essentially, what you can do to test to see if it works, kind of, you know, just like a, a quick, simple test, you just say using, and then you can go uh, com.google.android.play.core. And then you have your review stuff over here. Okay. and um, you know, once you add that over there, you have access to it. So we'll just look at the implementation just so it's quicker because I know we're running out of time. Um, so this is just the pull request that I submitted um, in order to actually implement it. So I submitted a pull request with the changes. So, you, you know, the only change that it needed was the AAR file. And then I submitted another pull request with the review. So actually implementing the review. <clears throat> so what I did is, uh, here, let's, let's get this. I created a service. Yeah. Let me go like that. And um, like, so, there is a, um, a, a NuGet package to avoid doing this, but I just didn't want to add another NuGet package. So let me add this as well into my code, where essentially you have access to your main activity from anywhere by doing this. Like you make it a static variable, 
it's not highly recommended, especially now since th there's ways around this that are better. Um, but you know, just like gets the work done, done for now. And I created a essentially I created a custom renderer, which um, is more like a service, a custom service, because it's not really rendering anything on the screen. Um, and you know, I just hooked this stuff up together. So instead of calling this over here, what was it? So if you remember in our uh, core project, we had this button. So instead of calling, you know, this review, we didn't really have that luxury at that time. So we call we called that a dependency service essentially. And let me create this in-app review class. So uh, this is just simple stuff now over here. Uh, you know, you're just basically creating an interface. Hi, uh, in-app review. App review. So, ooh. Where's the raw file? Let me see the raw code. Yeah, so just like that. And bam. So save this. Um, it's able to view it. And why is this giving me an error? Oh, because, because the function was not asynchronous like this thing is not asynchronous and um, go here so add the in-app service which is basically uh, the android heart like you know the android implementation of this review let's just go here this dot droid Yeah, so essentially, um, you know, we just create the in-app service, review service that implements the in-app review. We say that this is the implementation. And over here, as I showed you, you know, the C, uh, the Java code, we basically say, okay, uh, you know, we pass in the activity into the review manager factory if it's, oh, Oh wait, it's set to release. Okay, yeah. So since it's set to release, we uh, you know use the review manager factory just like I showed you guys, and then we use that manager to request the review flow, and then we say okay, as soon as it's done, you know call this function. Uh, sorry, call this. Yeah, basically you know implement this function and pass that manager in, and this is the listener. So. Uh, this was quite tricky to implement. Uh, like, there was a lot of trial and error over here. <laughs> and so, uh, essentially, as soon as it, you know, calls this function and it's done with that, it calls this, uh, you know, it passes in to this listener. And so, as soon as that's completed, it goes in over here and, uh, you know, it uses a task. And if that task is successful, um, it launches the actual review. And in that review, you know, that takes that task again. It, you know, does a bunch of magic. <laughs> and, you know, and then there's another incomplete listener that, uh, you know, that takes that review manager and does work with it. So it's quite complicated over here. So you guys don't have to worry about all of this stuff, which is why we partnered with James Bond and Magno to make it a one line piece of code. But essentially, um, if you look at all of that, and you know, we'll try to go ahead and build it, um, it does the exact same thing, you know? Instead of running, it's calling that one line, you know, we actually put the library in, we actually have the in-app review interface, then we have the in-app review service, and then we call this all of this stuff. So it's quite a bit of work that you probably don't want to do. 
and you know but you'll see that it does the exact same thing so if you actually publish it put it in you know you don't like james water magno for whatever reason don't want to add another download to his awesome package oh give me there oh what's up with this i think there was just a uh build error why is it giving me an error So let's see. I uncomplete listener. Oh, it exists in both. Yeah, so it's basically saying, hey, um, you have the same thing already, you know, because we added that um, uh, that new good package. So he's saying, hey, you know, that uh, this class is in both. Um, Playcore 1.8, which comes from the uh, NuGet package, as well as in this library that you've attached. So, you know, make up your mind, bro. So what we can do is we'll just, like, go ahead and delete this uh, just to show you guys. And delete this. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to work. Yeah, we shouldn't have that issue anymore. But yeah, now it's going to just delete this and install the other thing. What's up now? The type where... Uh, what else? Bring it on. Give me another error message. Okay. But yeah, like that's that's about it. I mean, you guys are going to see this. It's going to pop up. Um, let me bring up my slides again while it builds the whole thing. And, uh, you know, so essentially uh, with all of this, you know, just created a PR and now everyone has it, you know? So like you can do this too. There's nothing stopping you from doing this by yourself. You know, you see a really cool package, uh, contact people and tell them hey okay so how do i how do i contact james Montemagno? he has a a discord uh for <laughs> just don't spam him <laughs> so he has a discord for his merge conflict podcast and on that i was able to message him personally and be like hey uh by the way this is this and then you know he actually responded and you know when i got the response from james Montemagno, i was at a restaurant and I was like shocked to see like James Montemagno message me. I was like, what? Like, is he really messaging me? <laughs> did I really get a response from him? And, you know, my wife uh, did a little bit of Xamarin too. And so she watched his videos too. And she was like, what? <laughs> you actually got a response from him? And so I was, I was pretty, pretty stoked. And, uh, you know, I also wrote an article and we're in the process of actually publishing it. So, uh, yeah, that's um, it's installing. Yeah, see, it's the same exact app. Um, and it's, you know, it has the same exact text, but instead of using, um, you know, our code, uh, instead of using the NuGet package, it just uses blank code by itself. Yeah, but definitely use um, his implementation. It's just much easier, much better to do so. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Like you guys saw everything that I struggled to go through. If you guys have any questions about stuff that I do uh, about this, you know, I have a blog that gets a lot of views. Like I've done NFC with Xamarin, talked about why that's the best way of doing stuff. Um, I present from time to time about and i usually present like new stuff i don't really uh do the same thing frequently just because i you know it's cool to like spread the knowledge and uh i do have a youtube channel which also has like a ton of hours watched um i don't know it's like was it four four or five thousand hours view hours yeah and like the blog yeah 
is uh, also has quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, like follow me on Twitter or email me if you have any questions. Uh, you know, I'd love to um, connect with you. And yeah, thank you so much, Andrew, for the opportunity. All right, thanks for thanks for coming. I'm gonna give you a round of applause <laughs> for that wonderful presentation.